Welcome to the Real Life English series. Today, you are going to learn real English used by native English speakers. Are you ready? Well then, I'm teacher Tiffany. Let's jump right in. So what I want you to do is take a look at this image. There are three individuals, but if we zoom in on one individual, the first word that pops into my mind is rolling. Rolling. Now I want you to repeat after me for pronunciation practice. Rolling. Excellent. Now while looking at it, rolling. Great job. Now rolling just means to, <laughs> to laugh very hard, just like I did just now, right? In English, when someone is laughing a lot and very hard, we say, "Woo! that person is rolling. Makes sense, right? Now let me give you an example sentence so you can understand it even more. Here we go. The kids <laughs> were rolling when the little boy told them a funny joke. You know how it is, right? When someone tells you a good joke, and you just can't, you can't keep it in, right? You start laughing very hard. In English, we say, man, you were rolling. So again, the kids were rolling when the little boy told them a funny joke. Now I want you to be able to use this. So here's the pattern you can follow. I was rolling when dot, dot, dot. Think of a situation or a time period when, where you were just completely, you lost it. You started laughing because something was so funny. Again, in English, we say rolling and the pattern is I was rolling when dot, dot, dot. Here's the sentence using the pattern. I was rolling when my friend told me what happened during the meeting. So something funny happened during the meeting and this individual said, man, <laughs> I was rolling when my friend told me what happened during the meeting. Makes sense, right? All right. Now let's take a look at another portion of the image again. These ladies are sitting together, but if we go to another section, we see this right here, the laptop and we see this individual. And I think of this word focus after me focus. Excellent. Again, focus. Great job. Now this word focus just means giving a lot of attention to one particular thing. Again, giving a lot of attention to one particular thing. And here's a sentence. All of the students were focused on their exam questions. Think about it when you were in school or maybe you're in school. Now you would study a lot or you are studying a lot right now. And when you had to take the exam or when you have to take your exam, you are going to put a lot of attention on the questions on the test, right? You're going to focus. So again, all of the students were focused on their exam questions. Makes sense, right? Okay. Now let's do a quick quiz. I want to see if you are ready. Oh, wait a minute before that, let me give you a pattern because I want you to be able to use it like a native English speaker. So here we go. The pattern is right here. I focus the most when I dot, dot, dot. Very simple pattern. Again, I focus the most when I dot, dot, dot. Now for me personally, I actually focus the most when I listen to jazz music. My dad, when I was growing up, he loved jazz music. So I got in the habit of when I'm working or doing something where I need to focus, listening to jazz music. So I can use the pattern and I can say this right here. I focus the most when I play soft jazz music. You caught it, right? It makes sense, right? So I want you to use the pattern as well. I focus the most when I dot, dot, dot. Now it's time for your first quiz. Here we go. And I want you again to think about what we've learned so far. Here's the question. Here's the fill in the blank sentence. It is important to dot, dot, dot. When you play chess, you have five seconds. Go time. What's the answer? 
Excellent. Yes, it is important to focus when you play chess. Excellent. Very good. Now here's the next question. All right, let's restart our timer. The two kids were dot, dot, dot when their friend tripped and fell five seconds starts now. Time was the answer. Yes, you got it. The two kids were rolling when their friend tripped and fell. Make sense. Excellent. Again. So we've learned again so far, two things we've learned focus and we also learned you got it rolling. So let's keep going. I want us to go back and look at the next part of the image. If we zoom into another section of the image, we'll see something else right here. Popped collar. Now this is something you probably have never heard before, and you probably have never seen this in an English book. Once again, I want you to look at it with me. Popped collar. Excellent. Last time popped collar. Very good. Now I want you to very quickly look at the picture. Once again, look at the jacket she's wearing. You see how the collar is kind of up. Well, in English, we call that a popped collar. So the meaning again, popping or lifting the collar of a shirt so that it covers the neck. In English, we say you are popping your collar. I remember when I was in high school, a lot of the guys would pop the collars of their polo shirts because you know, they wanted to look cool. They would pop their collars again, real life English. So here's the sentence. The high school seniors liked to pop their collars to show that they were cool. You got it right now. Let me give you the sentence pattern so that you can start using this and start sounding more like a native English speaker. Here's the pattern. Whenever I wear my dot, 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 I like to pop my collar again. Think of a specific shirt or jacket. The pattern. Once again, whenever I wear my dot, 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 I like to pop my collar. So here's a sentence using the pattern. Whenever I wear my bright orange polo shirt, I like to pop my collar. You got it, right? All right, good. So again, we have popped collar. Now I want us to go back to the image and look at this part right here. You see a wonderful, beautiful leather journal. And the word that pops up is studious again, real life English. When I look at this image, the very first thing that pops into my head as a native English speaker is the word studious. So I want you to repeat after me studious. Excellent. Now, while looking at it, studious. Great job. Now studious, a studious person is just someone that enjoys studying or spends a lot of time studying. I was a studious individual when I was in school, I loved learning and I still enjoy learning now. So again, a studious person is someone that enjoys studying or spends a lot of time studying. So here's a sentence. The woman was very quiet and studious. Again, the woman was very quiet and studious. You got it. Now let me give you the sentence pattern you can use to start sounding like a native English speaker. Dot, dot, dot was the most studious person I knew when I was in high school. Think of a person, an individual again. Dot, dot, dot was the most studious person I knew when I was in high school. So I can say right here, my best friend was the most studious person I knew when I was in high school. You got it right. Very simple pattern. Think of someone you knew when you were in high school that was extremely studious. All right, now let's go back to the image because there's one other portion I want us to check out. If we actually zoom out, we'll see something very interesting. The word that pops up is collaboration. All right. It's a long one. I'll show it to you at the same time. Here we go. After me 
collaboration. Excellent. Again, collaboration. Great job. Now collaboration, this just means the situation of two or more people working together to create or achieve the same thing. In English, we say collaboration. So once again, look at the image. It looks like these three individuals are coming together to work on one specific project, a collaboration. Now let's look at the example sentence. Here we go. The three students were working in close collaboration to finish the project on time. I'll say it one more time. The three students were working in close collaboration to finish the project on time. Makes sense, right? Now let me give you the pattern you can use again. I want you to start using these real life English words so that you can sound more like a native English speaker. Here's the sentence pattern. I almost forgot the word. <laughs> Here we go. A collaboration between dot, dot, dot is required to dot, dot, dot. Once again, a collaboration between a group of individuals is required to accomplish a specific goal. So using this pattern, I could say a collaboration between Apple and Samsung is required to develop the new technology, right? Using the pattern, we can make a very good English sentence. Well, now I think, you know, what time it is. Yes, it is time for your next quiz. Here we go. All right. So you've learned a lot. Let's get started with quiz question. Number one, the girl was dot, dot, dot. After she heard the joke five seconds. Time. What's the answer? Excellent. Yes. The girl was rolling after she heard the joke. Excellent. All right. Question number two, here we go. You're doing a great job. They were all dot, dot, dot on the routine they had to do for their performance. I'll read it one more time. They were all dot, dot, dot on the routine they had to do for their performance. Five seconds. Time. What's the answer? Yes, you got it. They were all focused on the routine they had to do for their performance. All right. Question number three, here we go. Here's the question. Michael said that he always dot, dot, dot. When he was in university time, you ready? The time starts now. Time What's the answer. Yes, Michael said that he always popped his collar when he was in university. Excellent, excellent job. All right, question number four. Here we go. Samantha was always very dot, dot, dot. I think you know it. So no one was surprised when she became the class valedictorian. What's the answer? Five seconds. Three, two, one. Time. Excellent. Samantha was always very studious. So no one was surprised when she became the class valedictorian. Excellent. Last question. Question number five. Are you going to get all of them right? Here we go. The new airport is a dot, dot, dot between two of the best architects in the country. Five seconds starts now. time. Did you get the hit? Excellent collaboration. The new airport is a collaboration between two of the best architects in the country. Excellent job. You are amazing, man. I really hope you learned a lot from this lesson. I hope you're able to use each and every word today, at least one time. I can't wait to talk to you. Have a wonderful week, but as always remember to speak English. You still there? <laughs> you know what time it is. It's story time.
Hey, I said it's story time. <laughs> All right. So I want to tell you guys something that happened to me that had me and my friends rolling. All right. So I have had many roommates. I've lived with a lot of people between college and being a missionary in South Korea. I've had to live with many different people in different apartments and different dorm rooms. And I'm okay with everyone, right? But I had one roommate that honestly, from the moment I met this roommate, I did not like this roommate. So let me explain what happened. So I moved into a new apartment when I was in South Korea and I already had one roommate. She and I, even to this day, were still extremely close friends and we were happy. Again, we were getting to know each other as we were, you know, setting up our rooms. And while we were talking one day, we realized that we had another roommate. Now, initially she and I thought that we were the only ones that we were going to be living together, right? But one day when we were sitting in the kitchen, we realized that we had quite a few roommates. Now, if you're uh, following along, I think you know where this story is going. You see, my friend and I, I'm a very clean person. My friend is also, I can say even now, a very clean person. But when we moved into the apartment, the previous individuals were not as clean. So our new roommates were hundreds of roaches. Even thinking about it makes my flesh crawl. You guys can look that one up. Now I want to tell you again about a specific roommate. Again, there were many roaches and we had to figure out how we were going to get rid of the roaches. So she and I, we were terrified. We did not like roaches, right? So we would clean every day, clean the kitchen, clean the bathroom. We scrubbed everything. But again, the previous tenants, the previous individuals, unfortunately had not kept a clean apartment. So these new roommates were there. So one night after spending all day cleaning, my friend and I, my roommate, the actual roommate and I were both tired and she went to bed and I went to my room. So I went inside my room and I closed my door. I changed my clothes, getting ready to go to bed and I opened my drawer. I needed to get some socks. And when I opened my drawer, that's when I met my other roommate. Sitting on top of my clothes was one single roach in my drawer on top of the clothes. But the interesting thing was when I opened the drawer, he wasn't scared. I opened the drawer and I was literally about this close, about that close to him. But I had been so traumatized, I didn't even scream. I looked at the roach and the roach looked back at me like, hey girl, what's up? I see you moved in, your room looks nice. And I actually started talking to the roach. True story, y'all. I said, here's the deal. Apparently you're a new roommate. As long as I never see you again, we're not going to have a problem. And I feel like the roach said, okay. I literally closed the drawer back and I got in my bed and went to sleep. Now, listen, I can laugh about this now. Praise God. A few weeks later, we were able to get rid of all the roaches. It was a, a very traumatizing experience. We had to call family members in America to get some tips and tricks, but we eventually got rid of all of those roommates. But whenever we talk about that night and that specific roommate, man, it makes my friends and I laugh so hard. We always roll when we talk about that situation. So maybe you've also had an unwanted roommate and maybe you've had to figure out ways of getting rid of that roommate. A lot of times your traumatizing experience later on, when you think about it, you actually can laugh about it. I hope you guys enjoyed this story and I'll talk to you guys next time.